Edwards Air Force Base AFB IATA EDW IKO KEDW FAA LID EDW is a United States Air Force installation located in Kern County in Southern California about 22 miles 35 kilometers northeast of Lancaster and 15 miles 24 kilometers east of Rosamond it is the home of the Air Force Test Center, Air Force Test Pilot School, and NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center. It is the Air Force Materiel Command Center for conducting and supporting research and development of flight, as well as testing and evaluating aerospace systems from concept to combat. It also hosts many test activities conducted by America's commercial aerospace industry. Topic Overview Previously known as Moorock Air Force Base, Edwards AFB is named in honor of Captain Glenn Edwards During World War II, he flew A-20 Havoc light attack bombers in the North African campaign on 50 hazardous, low-level missions against German tanks, convoys, troops, bridges, airfields, and other tactical targets. Edwards became a test pilot in 1943 and spent much of his time at Moorock Army Air Field, on California's high desert, testing wide varieties of experimental prototype aircraft. He died in the crash of a Northrop YB-49 flying wing near Moorock AFB on 5 June 1948, the base is next to Rogers Dry Lake, an enderiac desert salt pan whose hard dry lake surface provides a natural extension to Edwards runways. This large landing area, combined with excellent year-round weather, makes the base good for flight testing. The lake is a National Historic Landmark. The base has helped develop virtually every aircraft purchased by the Air Force since World War II. Almost every United States military aircraft since the 1950s has been at least partially tested at Edwards, and it has been the site of many aviation breakthroughs. Notable occurrences at Edwards include Chuck Yeager's flight that broke the sound barrier in the Bell X 1, test flights of the North American X 15 the first landings of the Space Shuttle, and the 1986 around-the-world flight of the Rutan Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> Units <laughs> Air Force Test Center Topic 412th Test Wing The 412th Test Wing plans, conducts, analyzes, and reports on all flight and ground testing of aircraft, weapons, software and components as well as modeling and simulation for the U.S. Air Force. The wing also oversees the base's day-to-day -day operations and provides support for military, federal civilian, and contract personnel assigned to Edwards AFB. Planes assigned to the 412th carry the tail code, ED. U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School, part of the 412th Test Wing, USAF TPS is where the Air Force's top pilots, navigators and engineers learn how to conduct flight tests and generate the data needed to carry out test missions. The comprehensive curriculum of Test Pilot School is fundamental to the success of flight test and evaluation. 412th Operations Group, the 412th OG flies an average of 90 aircraft with upwards of 30 aircraft designs. It performs an annual average of more than 7,400 missions, including more than 1,900 test missions. Its squadrons include 411th Flight Test Squadron, F-22, 416th Flight Test Squadron, F-16 
419th Flight Test Squadron, B-52H, B-1, B-2 445th Flight Test Squadron, Initial Flight Test Operations, T-38 461st Flight Test Squadron, F-35 Joint Strike Fighter 412th Flight Test Squadron, C-135C Speckled Trout 418th Flight Test Squadron, C-130 and Special Operations Variants, CV-22, KC-135 and Special Variants, C-17A 452d Flight Test Squadron, RQ-4 412th Test Management Division 412th Test Management Group 412th Electronic Warfare Group 412th Engineering Division The Engineering Division and the Electronic Warfare Group provide the central components in conducting the test and evaluation mission of the 412 terawatts. They provide the tools, talent and equipment for the core disciplines of aircraft structures, propulsion, avionics and electronic warfare evaluation of the latest weapon system technologies. They also host the core facilities that enable flight test and ground test. The Range Division, Benefield and Echoic Facility, Integrated Flight Avionics Systems Test Facility and the Air Force Electronic Warfare Evaluation Simulator. The Project and Resource Management Divisions provide the foundation for the successful program management of test missions. 412th Civil Engineer Division 412th Maintenance Group 412th Medical Group 412th Mission Support Group Topic: Associate Units There are a vast array of organizations at Edwards that do not fall under the 412th Test Wing. They are known as Associate Units. These units do everything from providing an on-base grocery store to testing state-of-the-art rockets. Topic: 31st Test and Evaluation Squadron Tail Code OT. The 31st Test and Evaluation Squadron provides Air Combat Command personnel to support combined test and evaluation on Air Force weapons systems. Established in 1917, it is one of the oldest units of the United States Air Force. The Desert Pirates are part of the 53D Test and Evaluation Group, Nellis AFB, Nevada and the 53D Wing, Eglin AFB, Florida. It also provides the Air Force Operational Test and Evaluation Center, Kirtland AFB, New Mexico, and Air Force Materiel Command, Wright-Patterson AFB, Ohio, with test team members who have an operational perspective to perform test and evaluation on combat Air Force systems. The 31st is staffed with a mixture of operations, maintenance and engineering experts who plan and conduct tests, evaluate effectiveness and suitability, and influence system design. The squadron's personnel are integrated into the B-1, B-2, B-52, Global Hawk, MQ-9 and F-35 Joint Strike Fighter programs. Their results and conclusions support Department of Defense acquisition, deployment and employment decisions. Topic. Air Force Operational Test and Evaluation Center, Detachment 1 
An Air Force Materiel Command named unit assigned to Kirtland AFB, New Mexico, AFOTEC Detachment 1 is responsible for accomplishing Block 2 and 3 initial operational test and evaluation of the F-35 Lightning II for the U.S. Air Force, United States Navy, United States Marine Corps, United Kingdom Ministry of Defense, and the Royal Netherlands Air Force. Topic. Air Force Operational Test and Evaluation Center, Detachment 5, Asterisk Asterisk AFOTEC Detachment 5 is responsible for conducting the operational test and evaluation of USAF aircraft and avionics systems. Certification by Detachment 5 is required in advance prior to new aircraft prior to AFMC full rate production and combat fielding decisions. Detachment 5 personnel are integrated into the Flight Test Center's combined test squadrons and provide a critical operating perspective during developmental flight testing to help prepare systems for their final operational test and evaluation. Asterisk asterisk note, an AFOTEC Detachment 3 is an unconfirmed geographically separated unit, which may be assigned to a remote facility of Edwards AFB at Groom Lake, Nevada, that may perform similar testing as Detachment 5 on weapons systems not publicly identified. During 1978 and 1979, an AFFTC test pilot and a pair of flight test engineers were engaged in proof of concept testing with Lockheed's low observable technology demonstrator, dubbed Have Blue. The successful conduct of these tests led immediately to the development of the F 117A Nighthawk, the world's first operational stealth fighter. Topic. Air Force Plant 42 Production Flight Test Installation A remote facility of Edwards AFB, located at Palmdale, California, Plant 42 is a government-owned, contractor-operated facility with proximity to both the concentration of aerospace industry in Los Angeles, and the high-speed corridors and resources of the 412th Test Wing at Edwards. Plant 42 is one of four Air Force plants located throughout the United States, and is uniquely situated to fully support the Air Force's newest and most advanced aerospace systems. It provides industrial facilities for production, modification, depot maintenance and flight testing of aerospace systems. It is staffed by a mixture of civilian defense contractors, as well as USAF personnel. Topic. NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center Contained inside Edwards Air Force Base is NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center AFRC, where modern aircraft research is still active e.g. the Boeing X-45. The AFRC is home to many of the world's most advanced aircraft. Notable recent research projects include the Controlled Impact Demonstration and the Linear Aerospike State Route 71 experiment. It is chartered to research and test advanced aeronautics, space and related technologies for atmospheric flight operations, and to transfer those technologies to industry and other government agencies. Armstrong supports NASA's Earth science research with a fleet of specialized manned and unmanned environmental science aircraft. Armstrong is also involved in NASA's space science mission by managing and flying the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. The center is named for Neil A. Armstrong, an American astronaut and the first person to walk on the Moon. 
Armstrong's history dates back to late 1946, when 13 engineers arrived at what is now Edwards from the NACA Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory in Virginia to support the last supersonic research flights by the X-1 rocket plane in a joint NACA, Army Air Forces and Bell Aircraft program. Air Force Rocket Research Laboratory The Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL, Propulsion Directorate maintains a rocket engine test facility on and around Lumen Ridge, just east of Rogers Dry Lake. This facility traces its roots to early Army Air Corps activities. The Edwards Research Site is part of the AFRL Propulsion Directorate, which is headquartered at the Wright Research Site, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Other units and further details Edwards is also home to several other units from DOD, Air Force, Army, Navy, FAA, USPS and many companies that support the primary mission or the personnel stationed there. The main base is also the home of the Benefield and Echoic Facility (BAF), an electromagnetic and radio frequency testing building. It is also home to the Air Force Flight Test Center Museum, which has over 15 aircraft on display. The North Base is located at the northwest corner of Rogers Lake and is the site of the Air Force's most secret test programs at Edwards. The site has one 6,000 by 150 feet (1,829 meters times 46 meters) paved runway, 0624, and is accessed from the lake bed or via a single controlled road. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Airfield. As a military airbase, civilian access is severely restricted. There are three lighted, paved runways. 04R, 22L is 15,024 feet times 300 feet, 4,579 meters times 91 meters, and an extra 9,588 feet, 2,922 meters of lakebed runway is available at its northerly end. It is equipped with arresting systems approximately 1,500 feet 460 meters from each end. 04L, 22R is 12,000 feet times 200 feet 3,658 meters times 61 meters and was constructed to temporarily replace 04R, 22L while it was being renovated in 2008. 0624 is 8000 feet times 50 feet 2438 meters times 15 meters this runway is technically part of the south base and an extra 10158 feet times 210 feet 3100 meters times 64 meters of lakebed runway is available at its easterly end there are 13 other official runways on the Rogers lakebed 1735 is 39,097 feet times 900 feet, 11,917 meters times 274 meters. Imagery from the 1990s show an extension another 7,500 feet, 2,300 meters to the north, including a visual cue and centerline markings that extend about 15,000 feet, 4,600 meters down the currently declared portion of the runway. In 2017 Google Maps imagery, the runway is all but faded away except for the southern end where the runway 35 indicator is still visible. 05L, 23R is 22,175 feet times 300 feet 6,759 meters times 91 meters 
O five R twenty three L is fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety nine feet times three hundred feet, four thousand five hundred and seventy two meters times ninety one meters, and is next to O five L twenty three R at the twenty three L easterly end. O six twenty four is seven thousand and fifty feet times three hundred feet, two thousand one hundred and forty nine meters times ninety one meters. Not to be confused with the South Base 06 24 paved runway, which also extends onto the lake bed, or the North Base 06 24 paved runway. 07 25 is 23,100 feet times 300 feet, 7,041 meters times 91 meters. 0927 is 9991 feet times 300 feet 3045 meters times 91 meters 12 30ths is 9235 feet times 600 feet 2815 meters times 183 meters it is actually marked as two adjacent 300 feet 91 meters wide runways L and R. Runway 30 rolls out onto the compass rows, so its corresponding, unmarked, runway 12 is never used. 15 30 thirds is 29,487 feet times 300 feet 8,988 meters times 91 meters. 1836 is 23086 feet times 900 feet 7037 meters times 274 meters It is actually marked as three adjacent 300 feet 91 meters wide runways L C and R The Rosamond Lake bed has two runways painted on it 02, 20 is 20,998 feet long. 11, 29 is 20,998 feet long. Topic: History. Topic: Origins. A water stop on the Santa Fe Railroad since 1882, the site was largely unsettled until the early 20th century. In 1910 Ralph, Clifford and Effie Corum built a homestead on the edge of Rogers Lake. The Corums proved instrumental in attracting other settlers and building infrastructure in the area, and when a post office was commissioned for the area, they named it Moorock, a reversal of the Corum name, due to the presence of a town named Coram, conscious that March Field was located in an area of increasing growth in Riverside County, and with the need for bombing and gunnery ranges for his units, base and first wing commander Lieutenant Colonel Henry H. Hap. Arnold began the process of acquiring land next to Moorock Dry Lake for a new bombing range away from populated areas in August 1932. The last tract was not acquired until 1939. The facility established to support the range, initially called Mojave Field, for the nearby community of Mojave, was Moorock Field. In October 1935, five men under a Sergeant Fogelman were sent to the area from March Field. They put out circular bombing targets in the desert. For the next two years aircraft shuttled back and forth between Moorock Dry Lake and March Field for crew bombing practice. At this time, another colorful character in Edwards' history, Pancho Barnes, built her renowned Rancho Oro Verde fly-in dude ranch that would be the scene of many parties and celebrations to come. The Dry Lake was a hive of hot rodding, with racing on the playa. The runway on which the Space Shuttle landed follows the route that hosted racing in the 1930s. The first major aerial activity occurred at Moorock in 1937 when the entire Army Air Corps participated in a large scale maneuver. From then on, the bombing range grew in size. 
When Arnold became Chief of the Air Corps in 1938, the service was given a renewed focus on research and development. Moorock Field drew attention, because the nearby dry lake was so flat Arnold described it as, "...level as a billiard table", that it could serve as a giant runway, ideal for flight testing. Over $120 million was spent to develop the base in the 1940s and expand it to 301,000 acres, 470 square miles, 1,220 square kilometers. The base's main 15,000 foot, 4,600 meters runway was completed in a single pour of concrete. Topic: World War II. On the afternoon of the 7th of December 1941, the 41st Bombardment Group and the 6th Reconnaissance Squadron moved to Muroc from Davis Monthan Army Airfield, Arizona, with a collection of B-18 Bolos, B-25 Mitchells, and an A-29 Hudson. On Christmas Eve, the 30th Bombardment Group and the 2D Reconnaissance Squadron arrived from New Orleans Army Air Base, Louisiana, for crew training. On 23 July 1942, the Muroc Bombing and Gunnery Range, Muroc Lake, California, was designated as a separate post exempted status. The name of the facility at the time was, Army Air Base, Muroc Lake. In July 1942, Muroc Army Airfield became a separate airfield from March Field and was placed under the jurisdiction of 4th Air Force. Throughout the war years, the primary mission at Muroc was providing final combat training for bomber and fighter aircrews just before overseas deployment. Among its sub-bases and auxiliaries were Bishop Army Airfield 37 degrees 22 minutes 23 seconds north 118 degrees 21 minutes 49 seconds west Blythe Army Airfield 33 degrees 37 09 N 114 degrees 43 00 W Palmdale Army Airfield 33 degrees 37 minutes 46 seconds north 118 degrees 05 04 W Desert Center Army Airfield 33 degrees 44 minutes 52 seconds north 115 degrees 19 minutes 31 seconds west Gary Army Airfield 33 degrees 40 minutes 45 seconds north 114 degrees 38 minutes 36 seconds WMUROC was initially used for IV Bomber Command Operational Unit Training. The B-25 Mitchell 41st and 30th Bombardment Groups and the A-20 Havoc 47th Bombardment Groups trained at the station in early 1942. The training provided newly graduated pilots 8 to 12 weeks of training as a team using the same aircraft they would use in combat. In 1942, the training mission was transferred to IV Fighter Command, with P-38 Lightning O2 training for the 78th and 81st Fighter Groups. In 1943, the 360th Fighter Group and 382D Bombardment Groups were assigned permanently to Muroc for P-38 Lightning and B-24 Liberator Replacement Training of personnel. In spring 1942, the Mojave Desert Station was chosen as a secluded site for testing America's first jet, the super-secret Bell Aircraft P-59 Airacome jet fighter. The immense volume of flight tests being conducted at Wright Field, in Ohio, helped drive a search for a new, isolated site where a top-secret airplane could undergo tests away from prying eyes. The urgent need to complete the P-59 program without delay dictated a location with good, year-round flying weather, and the risks inherent in the radical new technology to be demonstrated on the aircraft dictated a spacious landing field. 
After examining a number of locations around the country, they selected a site along the north shore of the enormous, flat surface of Rogers Dry Lake about six miles away from the training base at Moorock. Ground tests began five days after the first XP-59 arrived on 21 September 1942. First flight took place on 30 September when the XP-59 rose to 10 feet meters altitude for 0.5 miles kilometers during taxi testing. However, the first official flight was 1 October 1942 with NACA, Navy Bureau of Aeronautics, Royal Air Force, Army, Bell and General Electric personnel on hand. As with virtually all of the test programs conducted during the war years, most of the actual flight test work on the P-59 was conducted by the contractor. Although Army Air Forces AAF pilots flew the aircraft from time to time, and flight test engineers from Wright Field reviewed the data, the formal preliminary military test and evaluation program did not commence until the fall of 1943, a year after the first flight. Designed to validate the contractor's reports, this preliminary evaluation consisted of a very limited number of flights and was essentially completed within a month. Formal operational suitability and accelerated service tests did not get underway until 1944, well after the AAF had decided that the airplane would not be suitable for combat operations and would, instead, be relegated to a training role. The P 59s were tested at Muroc from October 1942 through February 1944 without a single accident, and, though the aircraft did not prove to be combat worthy, the successful conduct of its test program, combined with the success of the Lockheed XP-80 program which followed it in early 1944, sealed the future destiny of the remote high desert installation. Muroc would thenceforth become synonymous with the cutting edge of the turbojet revolution in America. Aircraft testing continued at this desert. Army Air Base. Then on 8 November 1943, the base title was changed to Muroc Army Air Field, Muroc. In the fall of 1944, 8th Air Force ran tests to determine how well conventional fighters stood up against jets. Also, in October 1944, a small detachment arrived at the base for experimental work in rocket firing and achieved such success that they remained through most of 1945. Other World War II test flights included the Northrop JB 1 Bat. In 1943, a replica of a Japanese cruiser, nicknamed Murok Maru was constructed in Rogers Dry Lake where it was used for bombing training until 1950. <inaudible> <inaudible> Post-war era With the end of the war, 4th Air Force relinquished command of Muroc Army Airfield on 16 October 1945 and jurisdiction was transferred to Air Technical Service Command, becoming Air Materiel Command in 1946. Test work on the Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star was the primary mission of the base for the greater part of the fall of 1945. The consolidated Vultee XP-81 single-seat, long-range escort fighter and Republic XP-84 Thunderjet fighter arrived at the base in early 1946 for flight testing. It was obvious even at this embryonic stage of base development that the Army Air Force Desert Station was destined to become a proving ground for aircraft and a testing site for experimental airplanes. The success of these programs attracted a new type of research activity to the base in late 1946. The rocket-powered Bell X-1 was the first in a long series of experimental airplanes designed to prove or disprove aeronautical concepts—to probe the most challenging unknowns of flight and solve its mysteries. Further evidence of things to come was experienced on 14 October 1947 when Captain. 
Charles Chuck Jaeger flew the small bullet-shaped airplane to become the first human to exceed the speed of sound. Four months later, on 10 February 1948, Muroc AAF was re-designated Muroc Air Force Base with the establishment of the United States Air Force as a separate military service. Units attached or assigned to the base at the time were the 4,144th Army Air Force Base Unit, the 3,208th Strategic Bomb Test Squadron along with communications and weather detachments. On 20 August 1948, the 4,144th Air Force Base Unit was re-designated as the 2,759th AF Base Unit and with the adoption of the Hobson Plan, as the 2,759th Experimental Wing, with the X-1, flight testing at Muroc began to assume two distinct identities. Highly experimental research programs, such as the X-3, X-4, X-5 and XF-92A, were typically flown in conjunction with the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, and were conducted in a methodical fashion to answer largely theoretical questions. Then, as now, the great bulk of flight testing at MUROC focused on evaluations of the capabilities of aircraft and systems proposed for the operational inventory. In December 1949, MUROC was renamed Edwards Air Force Base in honor of Captain Glenn Edwards, who was killed a year earlier in the crash of the Northrop YB 49 Flying Wing. From the time Edwards Air Force Base was named, speed and altitude records began to pile up as new aircraft were developed and the base started to build and branch out significantly. A major reason for the growth of Edwards AFB was the nearness of West Coast aircraft manufacturers. However, another major reason was the decision in 1947 to build a missile test facility on the base. The need for a static missile faculty to test high-thrust missile rocket engines was first envisioned in 1946 by the Power Plant Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. It was that decision that such a facility should be government-owned to prevent a single contractor exclusive advantages on Air Force contracts for high-thrust missile rocket power plants, and it would eliminate duplication of like facilities by different manufacturers. The choice of location in 1947 was the Lumen Ridge east of Rogers Dry Lake on Edwards AFB. Construction began in November 1949 on what was to become the Experimental Rocket Engine Test Station. Topic: Cold War. Topic: Flight testing. Jurisdiction of Edwards AFB was transferred from Air Materiel Command on 2 April 1951 to the newly created Air Research and Development Command. Activation of the Air Force Flight Test Center followed on 25 June 1951. Units designated and assigned to the center at the time of activation were the 6510th Air Base Wing for station support units. The test flying units at Edwards were assigned directly to the AFFTC. That same year, the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School moved to Edwards from Wright Field, Ohio. Its curriculum focused on the traditional field of performance testing and the relatively new field of stability and control, which had suddenly assumed critical importance with the dramatic increases in speed offered by the new turbojets. As the decade opened, the first generation X-1 reached Mach 1.45 km per hour, 1,103.75 miles per hour, and a 71,902 feet (13.6178 miles, 21.916 kilometers) altitude, representing the edge of the envelope. 
The D-558II Douglas Skyrocket soon surpassed these marks. In 1951, Douglas test pilot Bill Bridgman flew the Skyrocket to a top speed of Mach 1.88 km per hour, 1431.07 miles per hour and a peak altitude of 74,494 feet, 14.1087 miles, 22.706 km. Then, in 1953, Marine Corps test pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Marion Carl, flew the same plane to an altitude of 83,235 feet 15.7642 miles, 25.370 kilometers, on 20 November 1951, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics Scott Crossfield became the first man to reach Mach 2 as he piloted the sky rocket to a speed of Mach 2.005, 2,456 km per hour, 1,526.220 miles per hour. Less than a month later, Major Chuck Yeager topped this record as he piloted the second-generation Bell X-1A to a top speed of Mach 2.44 2,989.11 km per hour, 1,857.35 miles per hour and, just nine months later, Major Arthur Kitt. Murray flew the same airplane to a new altitude record of 90,440 feet 17.129 miles, 27.57 kilometers, these records stood for less than three years. In September 1956, Captain Ivan Kinshalo became the first man to soar above 100,000 feet 19 miles, 30 kilometers, as he piloted the Bell X-2 to a then-remarkable altitude of 126,200 feet 23.90 miles, 38.5 kilometers. Flying the same airplane just weeks later on 27 September, Captain Mel Apt became the first to exceed Mach 3 3,675 km per hour, 2,284 miles per hour, accelerating to a speed of Mach 3.2 3,920.1 3 km per hour, 2,435.9 miles per hour. His moment of glory was tragically brief, however. Just seconds after attaining top speed, the X-2 tumbled violently out of control and Apt was never able to recover. With the loss of the X-2, the search for many of the answers to the riddles of high Mach flight had to be postponed until the arrival of the most ambitious of the rocket planes. The North American X-15. Meanwhile, the turbojet revolution had reached a high plateau at Edwards. By the time the base was officially designated the U.S. Air Force Flight Test Center in June 1951, more than 40 different types of aircraft had first taken flight at the base and the nation's first generation of jet-powered combat airplanes had already completed development. One of them, the North American F-86 Sabre, was dominating the skies over Korea. The promise of the turbojet revolution and the supersonic breakthrough were realized in the 1950s, as the center tested and developed the first generation of true supersonic fighters. The famed Century Series. F-100 Super Sabre, F-101 Voodoo, F-102 Delta Dagger, F-104 Starfighter, F-105 Thunderchief and F-106 Delta Dart, and, in the process, defined the basic speed and altitude envelopes for fighter aircraft that still prevail to this day. 
The center also played a pivotal role in the development of systems that would provide the United States with true intercontinental power projection capabilities as it tested aircraft such as the B-52 Stratofortress, C-133 Cargomaster and KC-135 Stratotanker, as well as the YC-130 Hercules which served as the basis for a classic series of tactical transports that would continue continue in frontline service until well into the 21st century. It also supported the development of the extremely high-altitude and long-range Lockheed U-2 and the dazzling ultra-performance capabilities of the B-58 Hustler, the world's first Mach 2 bomber. Throughout the 1950s, American airplanes regularly broke absolute speed and altitude records at Edwards, but nothing compared to the arrival of the North American X-15 in 1961. The program got underway in earnest in 1961 when Marge Robert M. Bob White became the first man to exceed Mach 4, as he accelerated to Mach 4.43 km per hour, 3,372.15 miles per hour on 7 March. He claimed Mach 5 just three months later when he pegged a speed of Mach 5.27 6,455.98 km per hour, 4,011.56 miles per hour on 23 June and then, during the X-15's first full-powered flight on 9 November, he exceeded Mach 6, as he flew to a speed of Mach 6.04 9.27 km per hour, 4,597.69 miles per hour. Major White also became the first man to fly an airplane in space when he climbed to 314,750 feet, 59.612 miles, 95.94 km on the 17th of July 1962. NASA's Joe Walker flew the airplane to its peak altitude of 354,200 feet, 67.08 miles, 108.0 kilometers on the 22nd of August 1963 and Marge William J. Pete Knight reached Mach 6.72 km per hour, 5,115.31 miles per hour in the modified X-15A2 on 3 October 1967, a speed that remains the highest ever attained in an airplane. In addition to the X-15 program, AFFTC and NASA also teamed up to explore a new concept called lifting re-entry", with a series of wingless lifting body aircraft. These rocket-powered vehicles—the M2F2, M2F3, HL-10, X24A and X24B—paved the way for the Space Shuttle and future spaceplane designs when they demonstrated that they could make precision landings after high-speed gliding descents from high altitude. The major aircraft systems that were tested and developed during the 1960s, the T-38 Talon, B-52H Stratofortress, F-4 and RF-4 Phantom II, the F-111 and FB-111, C-141 Starlifter and C-5 Galaxy, all became mainstays in the USAF operational inventory. Another aircraft gained world fame in the late 1960s at Edwards, the Lockheed YF-12A, a precursor to the SR-71 Blackbird, shattered nine records in one day of testing at Edwards. The senior 71's full capabilities remain classified, but the record set on 1 May 1965 included a sustained speed of 2,070 miles per hour and an altitude of 80,257 feet 15 miles, 24 kilometers.
New aircraft types arrived in the 1970s, the F-15 Eagle with its advanced engine and fire control system, the single-engine F-16 Fighting Falcon with its revolutionary, fly-by-wire, flight control system, and the B-1 Lancer with its multitude of highly sophisticated offensive and defensive systems. These planes more than bore out the prophecy concerning the ever-increasing importance of systems testing and integration. Moreover, another major new element of complexity was soon introduced into the flight test process. At a remote location in 1978 and 1979, an AFFTC test pilot and a pair of flight test engineers were engaged in proof-of-concept testing with Lockheed's low observable technology demonstrator, dubbed Have Blue. The successful conduct of these tests led immediately to the development of a new subsonic attack aircraft that was designated the F-117A Nighthawk. The capabilities of existing aircraft such as the F-15 and F-16 have been continually refined and expanded, even as totally new aircraft and systems incorporating radical new technologies are developed for future operational use. The dual-role F-15E, for example, was developed in the 1980s and went on to demonstrate truly remarkable combat effectiveness in the Persian Gulf conflict of the early 90s. The low-altitude navigation and targeting infrared for night, or LANTIRN, system revolutionized air-to-ground combat operations during the same conflict by denying opposing forces the once comforting sanctuary of night. The late 1980s also witnessed the arrival of the first giant flying wing to soar over the base in nearly 40 years. The thin silhouette, compound curves and other low observable characteristics of the B-2 Spirit Bomber represented third-generation stealth technology, following the State Route 71 and F-117. The 1980s also saw Edwards host a demonstration of America's space warfare capabilities when a highly modified F-15 Eagle launched an ASM-135 anti-satellite missile at the dead P-78 or Solwind satellite and destroyed it. In 1986, Dick Rutan and Gina Yeager launched from Edwards to set a new aviation record by piloting the first non-stop, around-the-world flight on a single tank of fuel in the Rutan Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> Ground research Extensive aviation research was also conducted on the ground at Edwards. Two rocket sled tracks pioneered important developments and research for the Air Force. The first 2,000-foot track was built by Northrop in 1944 near what is currently the North Base. Originally intended to help develop a V-1 flying bomb-style weapon that never left the drawing board, the track found use after the war as a test area for V-2 rockets captured from Nazi Germany in Operation Paperclip. Later, Lieutenant Col. John Stapp appropriated the track for his MX-981 project and installed what was believed to be one of the most powerful mechanical braking systems ever constructed. His deceleration tests led the press to nickname him the fastest man on earth and the bravest man in the Air Force. The results from the first track prompted the Air Force to build a second in 1948. Located just south of Rogers Lake, the 10,000-foot track was capable of supersonic speeds. Its first project was the development of the SM-62 Snark cruise missile. This track was so successful that an extension was constructed, and on 13 May 1959, the full 20,000-foot track was opened. 
After the Navy had conducted research on the UGM-27 Polaris ballistic missile, the track was used to develop ejection seats that could be used at supersonic speeds. Though this program was a success, a budgetary review concluded that the track was too expensive to maintain and the track was decommissioned on 24 May 1963. Before it was closed, a trial run set a world speed record of Mach 3.3, km per hour, 2,512.0 miles per hour, before the test car broke up. After it closed, the rails were pulled up to help straighten Lancaster Boulevard. Topic. Space Shuttle support After President Richard M. Nixon announced the Space Shuttle program on January 5, 1972, Edwards was chosen for Space Shuttle orbiter testing. The prototype Space Shuttle Enterprise was carried to altitude by the Shuttle Carrier Aircraft and released. In all, 13 test flights were conducted with the Enterprise and the SCA to determine their flight characteristics and handling. After Space Shuttle Columbia became the first shuttle launched into orbit on April 12, 1981, it returned to Edwards for landing. The airbase's immense lake beds and its proximity to Plant 42, where the shuttle was serviced before relaunch, were important factors in its selection and it continued to serve as the primary landing area for the Space Shuttle until 1991. After that time, Kennedy Space Center KSC in Florida was favored. This saved the considerable cost of transporting the shuttle from California back to Florida, but Edwards AFB and White Sands Space Harbor continued to serve as backups for the duration of the shuttle program. Shuttles landed at Edwards as recently as August 9, 2005 STS-114, June 22, 2007 STS-117, November 30, 2008 STS-126, May 24, 2009 STS-125, and September 11, 2009 STS-128, due to rain and sealing events at the KSC Shuttle Landing Facility. STS-126 was the only mission to land on temporary runway 04 at Edwards, as the refurbished main runway was operational from STS-119 through to the retirement of the shuttles. Into the 1990s. The end of the Cold War was marked by the arrival of the YF-22A and the YF-23A. The two prototype fighters were the first airplanes to blend stealth with agility and high-speed, supersonic cruise capability. The YF-22A was selected to become the Air Force's new advanced tactical fighter after a brief demonstration and validation risk reduction flight test program. Now named the Raptor, the F-22A continues to undergo test and evaluation at Edwards. A new group of research projects came to Edwards in the 1990s. Global Hawk, an unmanned aerial vehicle that has been used extensively in Afghanistan and Iraq, made its first flight at Edwards in February 1998. The X-24, X-33, X-34, X-36 and X-38, a series of new lifting bodies, technology demonstrators and half-scale models were tested here by NASA during the decade. The new millennium brought new projects with worldwide impact. The X-35A and X-32A, competing models for the Joint Strike Fighter program, made their first flights in September and October 2000. The X-35A won the competition in 2001 and will eventually be built in various versions for America's flying armed services and for foreign air forces as well. 
Also new are the RQ-4 Global Hawk, YAL-1 Airborne Laser, the B-52 Synthetic Fuel Program, the C-17 Globemaster III, and many prototype unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs. Edwards is among the few U.S. military bases to have gained jobs since the Cold War. Under the Dodds base realignment and closure process, several smaller bases have been decommissioned, and their facilities and responsibilities have been sent to Edwards, China Lake, and other large bases. During 2012, the 95th Air Base Wing, the former base support unit at Edwards was inactivated and consolidated into the 412th Test Wing as part of the Air Force Flight Test Center transitioning into the Air Force Test Center. The five-center consolidation not only better integrates the workforce, but saves taxpayers approximately $109 million annually. Topic. Previous names Murok Lake Bombing and Gunnery Range, September 1933 Army Air Base, Murok Lake, 23 July 1942 Army Air Base, Murok, 2 September 1942 Murok Army Airfield, 8 November 1943 Murok Air Force Base, the 12th of February 1948 to the 5th of December 1949. Topic: <laughs> Major commands to which assigned. 9th Corps Area, United States Army, September 1933 – 16 January 1941 – Chief of the Air Corps, September 1933 – 1 March 1935 GHQAF, 1 March 1935 – 16 January 1941 – Southwest Air District 16 16th of January 1941 to the 11th of March 1941 4th Air Force the 31st of March 1941 to the 17th of July 1944 AAF Materiel and Services Command the 17th of July 1944 to the 31st of August 1944 AAF Technical Service Command, the 31st of August 1944 to the 6th of June 1945. Continental Air Forces, the 6th of June 1945 to the 16th of October 1945. Air Technical Service Command, the 16th of October 1945 to the 9th of March 1946. Air Materiel Command, the 9th of March 1946 to the 2nd of April 1951. Air Research and Development Command, the 2nd of April 1951 to the 1st of April 1961. Air Force Systems Command, the 1st of April 1961 to the 1st of July 1992. Air Force Materiel Command, the 1st of July 1992 present. Topic: <laughs> Major units assigned. Royal Netherlands Air Force, 323 Squadron RNLAF, November 2014 present. Topic Geography The largest features of the four hundred and seventy square miles, one thousand two hundred square kilometres that make up Edwards AFB are the Rogers Lake and Rosamond Lake dry lakes. These have served as emergency and scheduled landing sites for many aerospace projects including the Bell X-1, Lockheed U-2, Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, and the Space Shuttle. The lakebeds have black lines painted on them to mark seven official runways. 
Also painted on the dry lake beds near Dryden is the world's largest compass rose, 2,000 foot (610 meters) radius, 4,000 feet (0.76 miles, 1.22 kilometers) in diameter. The Edwards AFB compass rose's magnetic declination to true north is measured by Google Earth's distance direction measurement tool as inclined to magnetic north with a 15.3 degrees east variance of true north as opposed to the current variance of 12.4 degrees east 2014. This is consistent with a calculated magnetic variance at this location in the early 1960s. The larger lake bed, Rogers, encompasses 44 square miles 110 square kilometers of desert. Because of Rogers' history in the space program, it was declared a National Historic Landmark. The Rosamond Dry Lake Bed encompasses 21 square miles 54 square kilometers and is also used for emergency landings and other flight research roles. By August, the lake bed is dry and rough from the weather and from high-performance aircraft performing landings. Both lake beds are some of the lowest points in the Antelope Valley and they can collect large amounts of precipitation. Desert winds whip this seasonal water around on the lake beds and the process polishes them, yielding a new, extremely flat surface. The Rosamond Lake bed was measured to have an altitude deviation of 18 inches (460 mm) over a 30,000 foot (9,100 meters) length. That's about 1 mm (0.039 in) altitude deviation over every 20 meters (66 feet) of length. The census-designated place encompasses an area of 44.38 square kilometers, 17.1 square miles, of which 0.173 hectares, 0.43 acres is water. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Environmental concerns. There are several protected and threatened species living in Edwards, the most notable being the desert tortoise Gopherus agassizii. It is illegal to touch, harass or otherwise harm a desert tortoise. Another notable species is Yucca brevifolia, the taller members of this species are called Joshua trees. Demographics. The United States Census Bureau has designated Edwards Air Force Base as a separate census designated place for statistical purposes. Topic 2010 Census. The 2010 United States Census reported that Edwards AFB had a population of 2,063. The population density was 120.4 people per square mile, 46.5 per square kilometers. The racial makeup of Edwards AFB was 1518, 73.6% white, 165, 8.0% black, 16, 0.8% native american, 99, 4.8% asian, 10, 0.5% pacific islander, 96, 4.7% from other races and 159, 7. 7% from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino of any race were 355 persons, 17.2%. The census reported that 1,834 people of the population lived in households, 229 .1 lived in non-institutionalized group quarters, and 0, 0 were institutionalized. 
There were 574 households, out of which 387 67.4% had children under the age of 18 living in them, 456 79.4% were opposite sex married couples living together, 33 5.7% had a female householder with no husband present, 17 3.0% had a male householder with no wife present present. There were one 0.2% unmarried opposite sex partnerships, and 0.0% same-sex married couples or partnerships. 68 households were made up of individuals and four had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 3.20. There were 506 families, 88.2% of all households. The average family size was 3.48. The population was spread out with 771 people, 37.4% under the age of 18, 392 people, 19 aged 18 to 24. 803 people 38.9% aged 25 to 44 87 people 4.2% aged 45 to 64 and 10 people 0.5% who were 65 years of age or older the median age was 23.0 years for every 100 females there were 106.5 males for every 100 females age 18 and over, there were 117.1 males. There were 785 housing units at an average density of 45.8 per square miles, 17.7 per square kilometers, of which 8 1.4% were owner occupied and 566 98.6% .6 were occupied by renters. The homeowner vacancy rate was 0%, the rental vacancy rate was 0.2%. 16 people of the population lived in owner-occupied housing units and 1,818 people .1 lived in rental housing units. Topic. 2000 census As of the 2000 census there were 5909 people 1678 households and 1515 families residing in the base The population density was 132.9 inhabitants per square kilometer 344 per square miles there were 1,783 housing units at an average density of 40.1 per square kilometers, 104 per square miles. The racial makeup of the base was 72.7% white, 10.4% black, 0.8% Native American, 4.4% Asian, 0.5% Pacific Islander, 5.4% from other races, and 5.7% from two or more races. 11.7% of the population were Hispanic or Latino of any race. There were 1,678 households out of which 67.3% had children under the age of 18 living with them, 84.9% were married couples living together, 3.0% had a female householder with no husband present, and 9.7% were non-families. 9.1% of all households were made up of individuals and none had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 3.19 and the average family size was 3.38. 
In the base the population was spread out with 36.1% under the age of 18, 19.9% from 18 to 24, 42.1% from 25 to 44, 1.8% from 45 to 64, and 0.2% who were 65 years of age or older. The median age was 23 years. For every 100 females, there were 121.6 males. For every 100 females age 18 and over, there were 130.4 males. The median income for a household in the base was $36,915, and the median income for a family was $36,767. Males had a median income of $27,118 versus $23,536 for females. The per capita income for the base was $13,190. About 1.0% of families and 1.3% of the population were below the poverty line including 1.3% of those under age 18 and none of those age 65 or over. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> State and Federal Representation. In the California State Senate, Edwards AFB is in the 16th Senate District, represented by Republican Shannon Grove. In the California State Assembly, it is in the 36th Assembly District, represented by Republican Tom Lackey. In the United States House of Representatives, Edwards AFB is in California's 23rd Congressional District, represented by Republican Kevin McCarthy. Topic. See also. Air Force Materiel Command John Stapp — medical doctor and research physicist, contemporary and friend to Jaeger and Murphy, known variously as fastest human on Earth, the bravest man in the Air Force, and the careful daredevil, headed the historic MX-981 rocket sled research project. Aerospace Walk of Honor, in nearby Lancaster, California, honors notable Edwards test pilots. Murphy's Law — point of origination sometime in 1949. Popularized by John Stapp, one-time neighbor of engineer Edward A. Murphy, his team coined the term which came out a few months afterwards in the first of Stapp's many press conferences over several decades. Murphy contributed measurement instruments that went awry to Dr. Stapp's MX-981 project which sparked the law's naming to Murphy by Stapp's staff on his single visit to the program. North Edwards—home of retired Chief Master Sergeants and NASA engineers as well as early clay mines vital to Morocco's fortunes. California World War II Army Airfields List of airports in Kern County, California